Hello YouTube friends, today I'm sharing a recent furniture makeover project. I hope you enjoy this paint tutorial. Let's get started. This dresser was being used in our son's room. I had painted it for him years ago in a matte black with a little bit of gray highlighting and distressing. But now that he is out on his own, I decided that I would like to repaint it and use it here in the upstairs hallway for additional storage. Now, this dresser had a matching chest of drawers, but I had painted that piece a few years ago in a really pretty layered blue finish, and it's already been sold, so I only had this one left, and I wanted to give this dresser a different look than my other furniture pieces. I love greens, I love black and whites, and so I thought I would use all of those colors on this one piece. Now this piece was painted and waxed years ago, so there is a little bit of buildup left, so I'm prepping this piece using what I always use, which is Crud Cutter Gloss Off. It is water-based and you do not have to rinse it or wipe off the product. Just wait about 10 minutes for it to dry. I started out with DIY paint in the color Little Black Dress. The dresser was already mostly all black, but I wanted a fresh coat of black on certain trim pieces of the dresser to frame out different areas. For the main color of the dresser, I wanted just sort of a greenish color, a really natural olive looking green, and I didn't have that particular color on hand, so I just mixed several of Debbie's Design Diary DIY paints, and I ended up creating my own custom green color. You can use obviously any colors that you want if you decide you want to do this type of look. And don't be afraid to mix colors. This turned out great. It's just what I wanted. Yellow and blue make green. And then I added some weathered wood and some crinoline to lighten it up. And I really do love the color that I came up with. Because I want a distressed look, I'm not applying full coverage here so that there will be less to distress later on. So here is how the dresser looks so far with the black and the olive green color. Now I somehow forgot to record applying the color crinoline to the inside of the door and drawer panels, but this is how that looks once it was done. This is just a base coat. I always layer all of my finishes and I want a very distressed, worn look in the end. So if you want to do a similar paint technique, but you want very crisp lines, you can either tape off your areas or just use a smaller detailed brush and achieve very crisp lines for that look. For a little bit of highlight on top of the Krenlin color, I added Rust-Oleum chalked paint in the color Chiffon Cream. Okay, and now before I add any more layers, I'm going to go ahead and wet distress all of the corners so I expose some of the wood underneath and that will give me a good idea of how everything is looking and then I'm going to go back and layer on some more.
So this side of the dresser has been wet distressed. You can see the edges are smoothed out. There's more wood showing through. It looks more, well, just distressed it, because it is. I will be going back and adding more paint, but I love when it looks really distressed. It really blends everything together. We're going to do more layers and glazing, so it's going to look really great, like an old chippy piece of furniture. So the wet distressing really helps bring everything together. I'm obviously going to do a good bit of work here. So here's a good example. This is before wet distressing and after. So obviously the wet distressing is very key in getting this look. And it also helps you be not quite as precise as you are painting if you're after this look. Now we are going to do more. So again, there's the before, and then after the wet distressing. I haven't done anything on the inside of the drawers, just on the edges. The next step is usually sanding to give a really great smooth finish, but on this one, I ended up applying the glaze first. And as always, I'm using Rust-Oleum Decorative Glaze in the color Java Brown. I love this stuff. I use it on everything. Now, if you don't want to darken your paint color this much, you can apply a top coat first and then add your glaze and then recoat it with a top coat again. One thing I'd like to mention about the Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint is that while it is fantastic to wet distress because it reactivates the paint with moisture, it will also reactivate the paint when you use a glaze versus when you use a wax because the glaze is liquid and it's also going to reactivate that paint and so when you are wiping it back off, it is going to remove the paint just as it would if you were wet distressing it. For some reason, I did this all out of order, but I always like to smooth out my surfaces and I usually do that prior to any glazing or waxing or top coats. But I already applied the glaze and so I'm now going to go back with 320 grit or you can use a higher grit and lightly sand the surface. And this is going to give you a really nice smooth finish. So you're going to have that smooth finish, but you're going to see texture, not necessarily feel the texture. Now in doing this, it's going to remove a tiny bit of the glazing, which is absolutely perfect for this look because it reveals a little bit lighter paint underneath, adding more dimension and interest to the finish. For this dresser, I just decided to use this Minwax brand finishing wax as the top coat. The wax will also richen the paint just a little bit, which I love for this piece. Now, of course, after you apply the wax, you want to wait a while before you buff it to a soft shine. I actually waited until the next day. I don't have that filmed, but after you let the wax set for a while, you'll go back with a soft cloth and buff it to a soft shine. These are the original drawer pulls that came on the dresser. I decided to add that crinoline color on them, wipe some of that back off, and then I added a little bit of that same Rust-Oleum glaze to them and wiped that back off as well. 
And then for a top coat, I had some fast drying shellac on hand, so I just sprayed them down with two coats of that, and then they were ready to put back on in a very short period of time because this shellac dries very quickly. And here is how the dresser turned out. I've really been obsessed with tricolor finishes recently, as you're going to see in my next video as well. Let me know if you like this Distress Chippy finish, and also I'd love to know if you're interested in seeing any other particular paint finishes that you'd like to see a tutorial on. Just leave me a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And also consider subscribing if you haven't already. And make sure that you turn on the notifications by clicking the little bell and selecting the option all so that you'll always know when I post a new video. So for the sake of the video, I threw together a quick vignette on top of the dresser. I need to redecorate this whole area when we get closer to summer, but for now, I'm sort of leaving it in a spring theme. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, and it somehow might inspire you to give something that you already have in your home a fun makeover. My next video will feature more color combinations and paint finishes using different chalk paint options, so look for that video very soon. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for your love and support. I wish you all the best and I will see you in the next video.